Peace, everyone. That little competition he walked within me and he talked within me and he tells me I am his own. If you would stop and consider the significance of God being within you, living within you, and talking within you, you would realize, as with others, so it can be with you. And as with you, so it can be with others. You know the scripture plainly says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. A good many people think you have to teach people. My spirit and my ever and omnipresence is the teacher. I do not tell you to teach the Sermon on the Mount. I do not tell you to teach any part of the scripture. But I do say, if you search the scripture and learn what it says, be able to commit even the Old and the New Testament Committed to memory. It's all right. <laughs> this Sermon on the Mount has been requested as a means to build you up in the identical teaching of Christ. That's why you have been requested to read the Sermon on the Mount, to study the Sermon on the Mount. But who can teach you? Learn to read it verbatim. And any other part of the scripture from Genesis to Revelation. And let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, the very spirit of my presence will be your intruder. If you learn the alphabet, you can say the alphabet, but it does not necessarily say you would be required to be taught the alphabet. When you learn the alphabet, to be able to commit them to memory by heart. To rehearse them. In other words, to keep them. It is a blessing. It is true. But why should anyone set themselves up to teach you something you already know? Search the scripture 
For in them you think ye have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. When you search this scripture, and when you shall have learned to read the scripture, and read it verbatim, you may not have the same interpretation that someone else has on certain passages of scripture. But whether you have the same interpretation or not, if you can read accurately and know what it says, my spirit will teach you the meaning and will give you information that is here. It's wonderful. It's a privilege to live in the actual presence of God. And it's a privilege for me to live in the heart and minds of you all. When this is true to you, the scripture can be read and can be understood by your intuitor, the one within you that teaches you. It's good to get together and read the Bible. Same as it is to rehearse or repeat anything. As you read it, relax your conscious mentality and let the spirit of my presence inspire. As I was saying today, at times there are those who cannot even read would desire to leave, would desire to teach, and would especially desire to try to read to others. You watch my steps and follow after my precepts. I have readers to read. You may say, read to me. Read to us all that can read and understand the word verbatim. But to have someone to read and cannot read, the blind will try to lead the blind. There and then the scripture, yea, the gospel is fulfilled in your hymn. The blind try to lead the blind, and they too fall in the ditch together. <laughs> that is the mystery. So then, in all of your getting, get understanding. We do not tell you not to read the Bible. We tell you specifically and stressfully it's a center to know the scriptures, know what the Bible says, 
in the written word and take cognizance of what it says and if there is an understanding in it to be revealed that the actual reading does not give my spirit and my presence can give it it may bring it out through different individuals it may bring it out through yourself as an individual but read the scripture if you desire to read it read it with faith doubting nothing but know within yourself the reading of it is the great essential. As I explained here before, the past time, how people split in churches bring about so many different denominations, all because one has a version And another one has a different version. He says, God did not mean for you to drink wine. <laughs> one will say, it did mean for you to drink wine. <laughs> that represents the blood of Jesus. Another one will say, it wasn't wine in reality. Well, I say, well, I, I'll, have, I'll open up near church so all of those who believe as I do can agree with me the different little simple points of view may be brought to consideration to bring about a separation <laughs> but with me The people cannot understand why and how all of my following are united together and will not be severed. I mean my real following. When personalities out of the way and individuals of grandness shall have disappeared and individuality is no longer considered, you may live in peaceful and quiet resting places without the consideration of division. So then I say, let these thoughts go home with you. And let me speak more explicitly and profoundly in your hearts and in your minds than what I have spoken in words orally such as you are now hearing. I have long since declared by composition, if you take cognizance of my message, a greater picture of me can be reproduced in you, in your life. Then and there you will have me explicitly depicted, reproduced, and personify. You will not have an occasion to look for another. For a better picture of me in thoughts and mind and ideas and in opinion, in spirit and in power, in love and dominion. Better picture of me in you should be reproduced in your likeness. 
as when I appear to others from you and from your likeness, I will be in the exact likeness of you as you are mentally and spiritually in the likeness of me. You should be the most. I've heard you sing down in Christendom, Lord, mold me and shape me in thine own way. Thou art the potter and we are the clay. Mm -hmm. But suppose you would vice versa it and declare, Lord, we are the mold. Now mold and shape yourself in my likeness. And that is the way the earth will be replenished, multiplied, and increased in the likeness of the perfect one. In the beginning of the creation, God formed man out of the dust of the ground, but in his likeness and image, scripturally speaking, according to the historian. Now let God shape and form himself in your likeness, and you will be in him. Mm -hmm. Oh, what love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we might be called the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, what we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Your privilege to let God be shaped and fashioned in your life, and you will be just like Him, characteristically and dispositionally. And all of your old mortal carnal disposition. Ways and actions will be eradicated, and God in you, in your likeness, will be developed and brought to fruition, and you will see me as I am. I need not say more, Paul. Oh, it is better revealed than told. I had striven to refrain from speaking, as there were many others decide to speak, and I do not wish to bore you. Not at all. Even if some of you could bore me. Isn't it true? From now henceforth, let God be in you to guide you. Thank you. If you are one with me, you will think sympathetically and harmoniously with me. And this mind that was in Christ Jesus will be in thee, and thou shalt be in me.
ಹಾಗಾಗಿ